welcome i'm claudia if you're new here i'm super excited because the day has come where i finally get to set up my larger ikea greenhouse cabinet i got a millspo tall because i figured if i was going to get a larger ikea greenhouse cabinet then i had to go big i'll be taking you through the whole process of building it and everything i'm using to accessorize it and make it into a functional greenhouse cabinet I won't go into a ton of detail about the build. There's a lot of videos on that already, but I will show you briefly how I built it or some of the things that I wish I would have known beforehand. I will say it was much easier to build than the average IKEA furniture I've ever seen or owned or tried to build before. I'm so proud I was able to do most of it myself, even though direction said you needed a friend. And while I did need a friend, it was really just to like hold something while I screwed something else on like two or three times tops. So again, very proud. Let's get right into it because I can't wait any longer. I've had boxes of things waiting to be opened so that I can place them in the cabinet for quite some time. I was waiting on two additional lights that finally arrived on Saturday, today's Monday, and I'm just too excited, can't wait any longer. So the cabinet is all set up there and we'll get started opening all of these packages okay but before we open everything up and start setting up the actual cabinet let's rewind a little bit and i'll take you through what it was like to actually build it i was truly impressed at how easy it was to build but i strongly believed that a big part of what made it so easy and not dreadful for me was that i had my best friend with me we were chatting poured ourselves a glass of wine. My husband was kind of in and out of the room. So my best friend would read me directions. So this is what's next. And again, the chat in between made it very enjoyable, very easy. And because I hate to read directions, having someone read them to me and tell me what was next, that made it super easy. The real only hiccup I ran into when building the cabinet was that because I wanted to drill the hole for the cords, at the very corner edge that I possibly could, then the grommet didn't properly sit in that hole. So my husband had to cut out a piece of the grommet, like kind of where it sits down, not the top, so you can't even see it, so that it could sit flush onto the cabinet. That was really the biggest hiccup. I will say I've seen other people drill the hole with such ease, and that wasn't really our experience. We found that the drill was catching quite a bit on the metal. My friend and I had to physically hold the bottom base down so that he could drill and it wouldn't just spin out of proportion. Maybe it's also because we had it on the floor versus carpet, I'm not sure. But definitely something to be mindful of and careful and then obviously you should vacuum and pick up all the little metal pieces because they can, you know, stab you and get into your skin. Otherwise the build was super easy, straightforward, and I was so excited when I was done building it. I thought the hard part was done, but let's get into what happened next. I think I'm just gonna open everything because I wanna show you what everything is. I wanna make sure I have everything since I haven't opened anything yet. And I think that once I get going, I'll probably get going pretty fast, hopefully. So let's just open everything. Let's see where we're at. These are light cord extensions for the Barina strip lights. These are the Barina strip lights. I got the T5 in the two feet length, and I believe that there is four of them in here. I also got two of the Soltec Grove lights because I want to add them vertically so that the plants can face forward and not just up towards the light. A smart power strip. Ah. These are the fans. They're a lot smaller than I thought. But this is what everyone recommended, so. These have to be right, right? <laughs> this isn't for the greenhouse. I think these are the magnets. Yep. Mm. Cord covers. And these little hooks. I don't know if I'm going to need them, but you know, 
I wanted to be prepared. And finally, the most exciting one of them all, I of course got the Modern Aqua Kit. I have it for my little cabinet. And not only is it beautiful and enhances the appearance of the cabinet, but it also maximizes space. So of course I had to get it for the larger one as well. So let's open that up. What's in here is a full shelf, two corner shelves, two pegboards, a full width hanging shelf, and a half width hanging shelf, if that all makes sense. If you watched my small tabletop greenhouse cabinet setup, you saw that they include QR codes on how to install everything. And I'm going to watch that really quick now. I, after installing the previous, I have a general idea and I think I could figure it out, but I don't want to make any mistakes. So let me watch that real quick and we'll be right back and get right into it. Each item has its own installation video and I think it would be best if I learn how to do one of the things at a time and install it and then go back and watch whatever's next. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think the first thing to do was the pegboard and um, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's all pretty easy. Just I need to, you know, know and make sure that I'm doing it correctly. So I'm gonna do that first and yeah, I'll start and start on the pegboard and I think I'm going to start working on it just where I have it now just so that I have more space to move around it and everything and then once everything is all installed then I'll start moving it to where I think it's going to go which could potentially be a mistake as it's obviously going to get heavier but where it's at right now is really close to my top one spot or my preferred spot for it to be and I can just slide it over really easy so hopefully that's not too big of a problem. Sometimes I just need to sit with it for a minute and get a plan before I can start executing even though I'm super anxious to start executing. I'm also just looking at all these poles that need to move out of there and I should have just done that already. So I think I'll start with that. I'm going to move the poles out of the way so that I have more of a working area. Then we'll install the pegboard and then we will come back to the next installation piece for Modern Aqua and so on. Ready? Break. <laughs> Just realized that part of the installation I did the other day setting it up I actually need to remove these little the things that hold the glass in the back to install the pegboard shouldn't be a big deal should be pretty easy so here we go I'm already forgetting, but if I remember correctly for the pegboard, you need a spacer and this little screw. The spacer goes between the pegboard and the little back spine thing, and then you obviously screw it into the little holes. Something to note is all of these things come with a little thing you can peel off, so don't forget to do that. So everything is nice and clear. Here is pegboard number one. So if you see it has these little holes right down the middle that are different from all of the other vents. So these little holes should line up with the spine of the cabinet. This is my favorite part of anything. Ta-da! 
I'm going to add these little things back to add the shelf right where the pegboard ends and we'll keep going. We're getting there. Next is the next pegboard. So kind of the same process as I did for the first one. are the little things that are gonna hold those half shelves and mini shelves onto the pegboard and these need to be peeled too one down three to go these fit right underneath here and then they will go on the pegboard I definitely should have opened the Amazon packages sooner because I ordered the fans. It said like single or two and I ordered two because I wanted two, one for the top, one for the bottom. But what arrived is this ensemble. So it's two fans and it's no way to detach them. And this cord is, you know, definitely, or like I should say this length is definitely not long enough for me to put one at the top and then one at the full shelf. So I'm probably going to have to order, not I'm probably going to, I just ordered um, this two of the singles. One second, it's the doorbell. It's my parents. So as I was saying, these are smaller than I was anticipating, which is technically not a big problem, but my problem is that they are attached together and the cord is not long enough to place in different areas. So I either will keep both of these at the top and then install a third one on the other shelf closer to the bottom, or I did order the singles that are separate and a little larger, and I'll just install both of those. So at this point now I need to wait until tomorrow to finish the whole thing. Um, and I'm wondering if I should even proceed with installing the lights tonight or just wait till tomorrow. So stay tuned to see what I decide. I am back. It is now Thursday, December 21st. Took a bit of a long break, but honestly, it was beyond necessary. I feel like I did a ton of research. I joined the Facebook group. I watched lots of videos. I ordered everything that I thought I needed to have to be completely ready for when I started building my cabinet. I could just do it start to finish. I did anticipate it taking me maybe like four or five hours. By no means did I think that was gonna be like a one hour project and done. Because like with everything, watching a tutorial doesn't teach us absolutely everything until we're doing it ourselves. And I hope that whatever I learned can maybe help someone have an easier time than I have had thus far. Sorry if I'm a little backlit right now, but I definitely wanted to show you the cabinet and I wanna be completely transparent. I don't want it to be like, and then I added the light, and then I did cord management because that is not how it's gone for me thus far. Mapping this whole thing out has been 
a mission. It has taken me at least three and a half hours today to figure out how I was connecting lights to one another, what was connecting to the power strip. I haven't done any of that yet, but I have everything hooked up with each other, how it's supposed to go. Placement was pretty easy for me from the start. I knew where I wanted lights, I knew where I wanted the fan, but getting everything connected to each other and then ordering things that I didn't even realize that I would need, and I'll go, I'll show you that in specific, once I started going. So again, it's been a process, but the cabinet is lit up. If I turn on the fan, so those would come on, but there's still lots to do. But I'm feeling like I can complete what's left tonight, but if not, definitely tomorrow. And I definitely wanna show you the greenhouse with plants during the daylight. I mean, it is very lit up in there, but I, I don't know. There's just something about shooting with daylight that looks nice. Okay, so I wanted to be transparent with you. Placement, again, was fairly easy, but how to properly secure things was or took more than I had initially anticipated. And since I did that off camera because I just wouldn't even know how to edit for hours of me staring at the thing, plugging one thing in and then unplugging it and trying all that out, I am going to first walk you through how everything is placed and what I placed in there, and then we'll move on to... Uh, what do I want to do first, weather stripping or cord management? But let me show you what's all in there and how it's placed. First and foremost, I need to show you how I've been living. Okay, so here we go. At the top, I have two Barina T5 strip lights, and these are the two feet long. Um, there's one in the back and one in the front. The one in the back is, listen, There's something going on with it. It's making the noise and then it also started flashing. So I'm keeping it off for now and I'll probably just have to order a replacement. But there's two of those here. I've attached these with really strong magnets. The magnets came with a double-sided adhesive. So I attached the magnet to the light and then the magnet just attaches to the cabinet since it's metal. I have both of these lights are hooked up to each other. And then I ended up going with the single fans instead of the two at the top and maybe one at the bottom that I was initially considering since I ordered the wrong ones. And I'll probably do this with you on camera, but I'm considering removing the grid and definitely removing the sticker that's in there. And then this is um, connected the same way with a magnet just at the top and then it's attached to the grid here. So that's the very top. No cord management is happening yet, but what I do love about these acrylic shelves is that they have these little, um, I don't know, indent situations for cords already. So the cords feed through really, really easily. So this is the, so up here we have a pegboard and there's a full shelf that goes side to side but I took that off for now while I got everything installed and while I do cord management. This is gonna go off to the side. Again, I'll do all of this with you. Um, this, the first official shelf has, again, two of the Barina lights. These are also the two feet and they are just same kind of thing. I attached the magnet to the light and then just place magnets at the top of the shelf and they are super strong and sturdy. In the middle, I have another fan. And then this is going to give airflow to the bottom of the cabinet. So this is an extender of the Barina light that's coming from the top and it's attached to this light. And then over on this side, these two lights are attached to each other. And over here on the corner, I have another, this is just what it comes with. And I'm using this for, these are the one foot lights that I added vertically. I thought it was really important to have vertical light here so that the plants can face forward and not up or, you know, another direction. I wanna be able to enjoy them. And the way that I attached these is, with also adhesive, these are slightly smaller um, magnets, 
because I wanted them to fit perfectly in that corner area. So with double adhesive, I adhered them to the cabinet and then same thing, I attached the magnets to the light and there you go. Here, well, you're gonna have another shelf, but again, um, I had to take that out while I was working with this. This light then attaches to this light. This is a corner shelf, and I added another one foot of the Barina T5 light, um, because again, I don't wanna skim on light. And then this cord attaches to power. Oh, and I'll get into this in a second. <laughs> On this side, I have another corner shelf. So same thing with the Barina one foot light. And then this cord is attaching to power. And then over on this corner, I have two of the Barina's one foot um, strip lights because, well, obviously there's a shelf here. But again, I wanna make sure that the plants face forward. So these two are hooked up to each other and then this will be hooked up to power. And that's essentially, let me turn this on even though I really shouldn't right now. So that's essentially what it's going to look like in terms of light. So once I received these single fans, the hiccup that I then noticed is that these only come with a USB plug, which technically, yes, I could do an adapter and then an extension cord, but what I did instead was order a USB um, extension cord because they're just more discreet, they're thinner, and I thought that it would be better for cord management. But I did need to order two because it's not like they could both communicate to each other. But it'll work. This is a power strip that I'm going to be having everything plugged into. It's a smart power strip. It's super nice and sturdy and strong. It has spaces for USBs, so that's where I'll plug the fans in. And my plan is to completely disguise this behind the uh, cabinet once I actually can get it in its spot and everything under control. But this is the situation that happened after finally being able to figure out everything of like who was connecting to who and where to power. I am back. It's the next day, Friday, December 22nd. I am determined to complete the greenhouse cabinet today. All I have left to do is weather strip and cord manage, neither of which are fun tasks for me to do. I feel like I just don't have the attention span for those tiny details, although I want it done perfectly, but I have recruited my husband and he has agreed to help if I don't want to do it myself. Either way, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it because I do know exactly what needs to be done here. I just don't want to do it, but it needs to happen and we're going to get it done today. I do think I'm going to sit here and procrastinate for a minute just because I don't know which of the two tasks that I don't want to do. I want to do first. I mean, neither is the answer. Um, I think weather stripping is pretty straightforward and easy. Again, the measuring and the... I really don't... I don't want to do them myself. It's not that I don't want to do them. I just... I, yeah, I may need to just call my husband. No, I can... No, I can do it. Okay, I think it makes sense to just start with cord management because that's as far as I got yesterday. And once all the cords are managed, then weather strip can be the last step and let me show you i got two different things for cord management one's a little wider and one's thinner and i'm hoping that the thinner one will work because i mean it's just thinner and it's just more discreet these are the two sizes that i got for cord management they're super easy they just like clip onto each other i'm going to show you exactly how they work uh, i just placed some cords in here to see how many i could fit in the thin one and it looks like I can fit three comfortably. This would actually obviously fit all of them, but it is much wider. So ideally I want these. I also want it to be uniform because if it's running all through the corners or even some on the middle, I don't want some of them to be a wider space versus a thinner space. So I kind of have to commit to whichever one I choose. But I guess as long as I have three cords, or less at any given time, then this should work. 
let's just get started. One more thing, both of those, both of these things come with adhesive, double-sided, so that is how that is going to stick onto the cabinet, but again, I'm gonna show you. The larger, stronger magnets came with these little adhesive um, strips, both sides. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to use one of these on one of the smaller magnets um, so that I can, let me bring you closer, so that I will attach this little on and off from the fan. I can, um, be a magnet, it'll attach to the roof of here and I can hide that a little better. I have used these little adhesives for the little magnets already and what I did was just cut them in half because they're smaller, obviously. I'm gonna throw it on the ground for now and then just stick it onto one of the sides of the magnet. It's attached up here and I'll be able to just hide this right under this light. I think I'm also just a little bit, and in, not intimidated, but I'm already like pre-annoyed because it's with adhesive, so if I place it in the wrong area, it's gonna be a big deal to remove. But let's just go with it and pretend it's gonna be great. <laughs> Here's the adhesive. So it's already, it has like the peel on one side and it's sticky on the other. stripping it wasn't as bad still not enjoyable by any sort of means or way possible but I did it and I'm getting a little bit more confident that I can just do the whole thing I figure since I've already shown you how I did it and how it's going to go I might just speed this up unless I encounter something that I think would show you valuable tip or like something not expected um, otherwise I think I'll just speed through it and hopefully it goes by smoothly and quickly. I guess I should say that for like this little gap, you can just cut these to size. prettiest but there is probably gonna be a plant in the corner and I think I'll just get some of this like white tape to put over that little crease so that I can't see it let me show you do you see right here so I just put some of this over it so it's not so obvious all right so this is gonna be my life for the next who knows how long I should probably time it it is Where's my phone? It is 1.51 p.m. Let's see how long it takes me to do all of this cord management.
I have an update. I have done all of the cord management for all my dog just knocked into hunter just knocked into the camera for anything that's being plugged into power and now i just need to manage like cords of lights that are attaching to each other but there's really nowhere else to go so let me get you a closer look and i will also tell you any issues or i guess tips of things that i found along the way i hope that you can see okay but already like just looking at it it looks pretty cord managed nothing looks sloppy to me so this is what we did together and then what i did here for these that connect to each other is i just pulled it tight and then coiled behind the back one and zip tied it and i did the same for anything that was like that. So you can see it here. It's not the best looking from the top, but there's gonna be plants sitting and again from the front. It looks pretty clean to me. The magnets make a bigger deal, I guess. But you can see here how I have things just coiled and zip tied behind this back light. So this came all the way down. That piece that I wanted to fix, these bigger pieces came already with this set. Uh, I don't know exactly what the purpose of those would be, but that was it. Not too much I can really do about this. I guess maybe I can try scooting it behind. Um, added some more weather stripping here, a little bit here, same thing. Coiled this behind. The middle was probably the easiest part. Um, so the only one I'm having an issue with, not really an issue, but it's this light. These two hook up to each other and then it hooks up to the power. But I'm thinking I want to get some white tape and then just tape it on the um, back side here so that it's flush with the light and then that will be that. The kit also came with corner pieces and I added some of the extra adhesive tape for the seams to make it a little more seamless, I guess. Uh, but it doesn't sit completely flush, so I think, again, I need better white tape to do that. And also, I don't know why, if it's part of the same kit, it's like a different tone of white. But it is what it is. So, yeah. Let's plug everything in and make sure that it works. Everything's on, um, except for the fans, so let me turn those on. The fans are on, they're pretty quiet, and I have both of them set on just the first setting. The top one is making an ever so slightly rattling, and I assume it's because it's attached to the top, because it doesn't make that when it's not on there. Maybe if I add another magnet in between, one sec. Adding the second magnet actually made the noise worse. So it's definitely something to do with the magnet that I'm gonna have to play around. It's not very loud. Let me get you up closer, see if maybe you can hear because it's barely there. I would just rather it not be there at all. I just turned the top fan off for now, but we're gonna move on to weather stripping which I hope goes by much faster. I already have this foam weather strip. It, it was like so much that came with when I was doing my small Ikea greenhouse cabinet, but it's gray and I'm getting just really specific. So I got these other two. I believe this one is foam as well. And this one is rubber, which I don't know if it's gonna work. But I'm going to do, hopefully, the foam one around the doors. And then I'll do the flappy kind in the door, like where the doors meet. Um, and there are two little holes at the top back here that I will have to plug in with something. I'm sure you heard the dogs. They just bark at everything. I just opened this up and it looks like it's rubber also. But again, it's white, so I really would rather use this than the foam one. So I think I'm going to give this a try and see how it goes. Thank you. 
have that strip all around the doors. It's pretty tight. There's a little bit of a gap at the top and then a little bit at the bottom that I might add a little bit more to. But I'm going to move on and do the door. I'm going to add it on this side and I'm going to remove the hardware because everyone says it's easier to remove the hardware and then just drill through this so that it's nice and easy to get on. And this is what this one looks like. You may have seen, I feel like some of those old school industrial refrigerators have kind of a flap like that. This is basically what it is. She is done. Finally, I can't believe it. It's like six o'clock, so another four something hours into it today but for now i am going to give it a good clean a good wipe down because it's got my fingerprints all over it from setting things up and then the moment i've been waiting for for months at this point adding plants into the cabinet i feel like i'm lacking in excitement but i'm just tired again another four hours today the days are super short so i just feel like it's the middle of the night and it's like six o'clock but i am excited i just I'm ready to be done with this project and actually be using it and reaping the benefits. thought it would go I think it looks actually pretty good but I'm anxious to see what it's gonna look like during daylight so for now let's just add some plants finally The cabinet is finally done. I can't even believe it. Like, is this even real? I mentioned light was a big priority for me and I can already tell the difference on the bottom half versus the top where one of the lights isn't, or I have it off for now because it's not working. I will take you over with a light meter so that you can see how much light the plants are getting. This is certainly not how it's going to stay forever or even for the next few days, I'm sure I'm going to be changing up some of the plants that are in there. And I definitely have some in quarantine. They were just new plants that I want in the cabinet. So, at some, you know, once they're ready to come out of quarantine, they'll make it inside the cabinet as well. But for now, I love what's going on. I love the way it looks. I wanted to keep this really authentic i didn't want to you know get everything set up and then come in on one video and say like poof everything's done so let me show you a close-up i'll show you with the doors closed and with the doors open and i'm so excited to hear what you think the next day yet again because I wanted to show you the cabinet during daylight and then I also just want to go briefly because I did show you along the way but briefly I want to point out some of the things that I think would have saved me a lot of time had I known them or had I done them prior to the moment I did. I cannot stress enough open everything right away make sure that you have the right things 
make sure that you measure, make sure that you have any extension cords, anything like that that you might need, and maybe even overcompensate. It's better to return later and have everything that you need when you're ready to set it up than to run into the speed bumps that I did where I thought I was ready and turns out I wasn't. That happened to me with the fans and then I ran out of magnets really quickly. And on the subject of the magnets, I found that these specific magnets are listed that you can buy them in different packs, like a pack of 10, pack of 20, 30, whatever. So when I went to order magnets the second time, I ordered a pack of 20 knowing that I ran out so quickly the first time and you know, I wanted to be over prepared. When that 20 pack arrived, they were not the same strength magnets. I don't know if maybe I was shipped the wrong thing. It's a possibility, I suppose. But so I had to go back and then order more of the 10 pack that were the original super strong ones. So just something to be mindful of. Again, I could have been shipped the wrong thing, but maybe they're just different. Another thing in regard to the magnets is I was under the impression that these attachments from the lights were going to be strong enough to hold the magnets and the light in place. And while the magnet does attach and grab onto them, or I should say this grabs onto the magnet, they were not strong enough to hold the weight of the light. I mean, they would hold it temporarily, but any minor tug or pressure would make the lights just come falling down, which is when I decided to just add the adhesive directly onto the light and then use the magnets that way. And of course, this could be a very specific issue related to me because I chose to attach most things with magnets, but if you chose another method, then you know, it may not be something you have to worry about. I will say that the cord management adhesive is not very strong. I've already, in less than 24 hours, in fact, I think like an hour in, have had several of them unstick and fall over. And you know how when you can just feel something sticky, like it's super sticky? This doesn't give those vibes. It's very like barely there. And I am concerned that with heat and humidity, it's just gonna make them wear off that much sooner. I mean, if I'm already having issues less than 24 hours in, I'm inevitably going to have to replace this with something else. So I am currently looking for what might be a better solution to better attach. It also doesn't help that the spine and the corners have the little holes for the screws to go in. So those bump out a little bit more than the rest of it. So I feel like it's obviously not sticking flush because those little bumps come out a little. Um, but yeah, if you know of any really great adhesive, please let me know. And I think the last tidbit is the Barina cord light extenders. They come in a pack of four. I believe four is the smallest pack you can get. I got two of those because I assumed that I would need them and they would go all around the cabinet, but I only used one of them. And what I don't love about it, I would have used them more if they had the option on one of the ends to also plug into power, but you can only attach them from light to light. So they weren't as useful to me. I only needed them for the very top and then the first shell for those to communicate. Otherwise, all the smaller ones that come with the lights were sufficient. I'm going to know exactly everything that I used for this cabinet down in the description below. Let me know if it would be helpful to do maybe a follow-up video detailing specifically what each item is and then maybe the total I spent on this whole setup. And I do plan to do a follow-up video maybe a month or three months from now showing you how everything's holding up, any other customizations or adjustments I've had to make, how it's working out, how the plants are loving it, and all of that. So a couple more things that I still want to do before it's officially done is I want to add two more of the one foot Barina lights vertically at the very top of the cabinet before the full shelf so that it can give the plants up there more of that front facing light. And I want to get some of that white tape to cord manage those two vertical lights at the bottom. Of course, I mentioned I'm going to have to do something about the adhesive on the cord management little clips. So that's something that I need to research and do also. But otherwise it's done and I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think my plants are gonna love it. Was all this work worth it? Mm, <laughs> time will tell, but I will say I absolutely love it. My friend Michelle said building an Ikea greenhouse cabinet is a labor of love and she's so right. I would not have kept up with this if I didn't love plants and want to provide that greenhouse 
consistent environment for them to just thrive in. And call me crazy, I'm already thinking about a second cabinet. But I'm so anxious to hear what you think. Do you have a greenhouse cabinet? Do you want one? What plants would you put in there? What kinds of customizations did you do or would you do or are you hoping to do? Please talk to me and let me know or any tips because clearly I need them. Thank you so much for coming on this roller coaster ride with me. I hope that this was helpful and if it was, hope you'll give me a thumbs up and you'll subscribe so you can be notified when I upload new videos. I'm definitely going to keep sharing updates with you. Let me know if it would be helpful to go into more detail on the products I used or how much things cost. I'm happy to do that as well. And thank you so much again for watching. I'm so excited to keep sharing things with you.